Hello, this is Rachel from Pure Photoshop Actions, and today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to install elements into Photoshop Elements, uh, how to install actions into Photoshop Elements using a Mac computer. First off, we need to open up wherever it is that we've saved our actions. Um, so wherever it is that you have downloaded your actions to, you need to open up that space. I personally have them installed in my documents, so we're going to go and click on my documents. I have a folder called Actions. Um, the really great thing about um, about this is um, it comes in a zipped file, whatever actions you've purchased. To unzip your actions, um, all you do is just double click it and you see how it just jumped in and made a, uh, it just quickly opened up a um, the folder. So unzipping actions in a Mac is super easy. Just double click that zipped file. Now, you do not want to drop a whole folder into Elements. That will completely confuse Elements. It will not work. So, um, I've already installed a couple in here. My next one is, let's say, I'm going to install just a pinch. We're going to come over here. Always read your documentation. This has all of your instructions and suggestions for how to use your actions. Right now, we're not going to take the time to read through all of those on this tutorial, but, you know, reading those might be a great idea. Here are the actions. I've clicked on the actions. This opens up all of the actions that I will be installing. Each action has three different files that do exact, that tell exactly what it needs to do. The first one is the ATN file. That's the action itself that actually works on the photo. The next one is an XML file. The XML file um, organizes the actions into sets. And the final one is a PNG. The PNG file is how you identify the, um, the action by its thumbnail. That's the thumbnail that needs to go in. So you need to install each of these for um, all of the actions. Um, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to launch a new Finder window. Um, and I like to view it in this column mode because it just if I make a mistake, it's easy for me to figure out where it is in the path that I've accidentally looked in the wrong folder. Okay, here is our installation path. It sounds very confusing at first, but once you've done it even once, you'll say, oh, that was so easy and be able to do it again in your sleep. So what we're going to do is you're going to go to your hard drive, library, application support, Adobe. Now we're going to go down to Photoshop elements. Here I'm going to go into elements 10. That's the version that I am working with. You are welcome to go into whichever version it is that you have and are working with. It could be 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. Those are all the versions that we have tested the actions with and know that they will work seamlessly. Um, okay, so we've opened 10, and now I'm going to go into Photo Creations. I'm going to go into Photo Effects, and this is where all of my actions that Elements recognizes are located. So I'm going to bring up my other Finder window. Um, this and grab my other finder window. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to, here's the actions from their folder. I'm going to click on the top action, then I'm going to scroll down. Holding down the shift key, I'm going to click the last action, and then I'm going to, whoops, I need to make sure I'm holding, so I hold the shift key down and continue to hold that last action that you want dragged. Drag it, drop it into this file. They've now been uh, loaded into uh, into this folder. However, we're not finished even though uh, we now have the actions in the folder. We need to tell Photoshop to recognize that there are new actions that it needs to put in its palette. So we're going to go back a couple folders to this locale folder. So let me tell you how what the hierarchy is. For those of you not using uh, this column method, we're going to go to our hard drive, library, Application Support, Adobe, Photoshop Elements, your version, I'm using 10, Photo Creations, and then, or actually we're not going to Photo Creations, it's the same, uh, it's the same step in the hierarchy that Photo Creations is, but instead we're going to go to the Locale folder. In the Locale folder, there's the en.us folder, or en-us folder, and then we're going to go to our media database.db3. We need to rename this so that Photoshop realizes that it needs to rebuild this and put in the new actions. 
So we're going to quickly rename this file. Oops. Cricut, silly. Um, and the way that I usually rename it is I add the date. I've already done one rebuild today. So we're going to say in September 21st, I'm going to say B since I've, uh, I need a different name. So I say, okay, return. Now it looks like I have no normal database, but as soon as I start elements, it will rebuild that database. So we're going to come over to our finder, say, okay, here we go. We're going to go to our hard drive applications and start elements 10. So elements 10 is now starting and uh, we're going to tell it that we want to edit. And you see this pop up right here in the middle. It says Photoshop elements, building content and effects. Right now that is, it's looking through all of that file that we just dropped the actions in and it's going to take those new actions and add them to the palette. Don't be alarmed if yours does not rebuild as fast as mine. I have a pretty fast computer, um, so and there's not a lot of things on the hard drive, so it does not take my computer very long to rebuild the database. Also, I only did one at a time. Um, so even those people who bought a couple of um, actions from us, uh, if you do one or two at a time, it's going to be a lot easier and less likely to confuse your elements program. So I have heard of some people's rebuilds taking as long as even a half an hour or more. So if it looks like it's not working and it's going for a half an hour, please don't be alarmed. Um, that's completely natural. Um, so mine finished up. The, um, we're going to come over here to effects. Make sure that you've clicked on the right tab that we're in the edit, full effect, and then here's the effects tab. And then you're going to want to have this third tab over selected. And uh, that gives you the choice of these drop downs. And here we have just a pinch. That's what we just installed. They're all here and they're all separated by their, um, by their, uh, in, into this set. Um, so you can choose your sets, toggle between them. Um, it's really pretty easy. Um, if you want to take this organization a step further, you can come over here to your window file and you could choose favorites and select that. That will bring up your favorites tab. It'll, it's not default selected. A lot of times it opens at the bottom. Just look where your favorites tab is. And then you can take your favorites tab. We're gonna go back to the effects and we're going to say, okay, you know, now that I've used these for a bit, I know which ones I use on every single photo. Maybe I say, okay, I like it's all about the bling. I really like Sunshine Baby. I like turn out the lights. And as you see, it's not moving them out of their sets. It's just making a copy for you over here into favorites. And then um, you're going to be able to say, okay, and you know, in set two, I really like to use um, Cloud Nine Baby is super great. I use that a few times a lot. Um, I also like, I think it's, can't, I can't believe it's not butter is a really great black and white. So maybe, you know, I could say that these are things I use on a lot of photos and I like to drop that tab over into the, uh, over into my effects tab. Um, and that way I can, I can go through my favorites for each, uh, each, each photo. But if I say, oh gosh, I really need to now use my glamour blur or something like that. I can go back into my effects and choose between my sets. Um, so that's how you install the actions and elements and how you keep them organized. This is uh, Rachel with Pure Photoshop Actions. Thank you for listening.